Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we've got another video in their own words about what it was like to go through a crossing the line ceremony. Crossing the line is when you uh, cross the equator, and when a sailor crosses it for the first time, they can go through the ceremony to transition from being a polywog to a shellback. This ceremony involves a tremendous amount of uh, what's often been referred to as hazing, and uh, generally just ways to have fun and relieve stress on a long voyage. It often involves a lot of disgusting shenanigans and uh, a lot of being ordered to do things a certain ridiculous way and then having to do that for the rest of the day and possibly being disciplined if you do not. So, here is, in their own words, what it was like to go through a crossing the line ceremony. Um, they, they, we were getting ready to cross the International Day Line and the Equator, which instead of being just a shellback, we were becoming golden shellbacks. There is a ceremony, not well, that's the, the ceremony comes up, but the day before, anybody that isn't a shellback is considered a log. And logs, if they catch all the shellbacks, they don't have to go through all the initiation. They just go through the ceremony and you get your certificate. Well, I think that's a ploy because they know who they are, but we didn't have no idea who they were. <laughs> we had a lot of fun, but they got revenge on us at 2 o'clock the next morning. And... Uh, they, they woke us up, um, made us crawl on our hands and knees. You couldn't look up. Uh, it, it was it was it was, it was a, a fun memory, even though it seemed like at the time it was probably one of the probably one of the worst. <laughs> but it was a good time. I'm very glad. I almost didn't, and I'm very glad that I did. Polywog is someone that's never been across the equator before. Shellback is someone that has been across the equator before. Uh, if you go across the equator, the shellbacks, which the, the people that have been across before, uh, get to just have their way with, <laughs> yep, with the uh, polywogs. Uh, they had, uh, I think they're called shillelaghs. Uh, Lengths of hose, three-inch hose that uh, one end or one end was uh, wrapped up with tape to make a nice handle on it, and they used to soak. They soaked us down with water, and uh, we would have to crawl from the front of the ship to the back of the ship, and there were poly or uh, shellbacks on both sides of us, and each one of them would take a whack at us with uh, the fire hose. So I was hit on the back side. I was hit uh, on my back, up by the neck. I mean, I was just uh, kind of black and blue for a while. <laughs> then we went back to the, uh, there was something called the Royal Baby. Uh, that is the fattest shellback on the ship. And uh, he had a lot of axle grease. Uh, spread on his stomach and we had to crawl up, up to him and then he would grab our head and just grind it around in the axe of grease in his stomach and uh, then we went to the uh, uh, there was a tank of water a portable tank of water uh, like you might see in somebody's backyard a swimming pool and uh, they had a tiltable chair and they would, they had this big syringe, and they squirted about seven or eight different types of oil in your mouth. So while you're trying to spit that out, they tilt you back into the pool of water, and there's all kinds of garbage and stuff sitting, laying on top of the water. So while you're trying to spit the oil out, the garbage is coming in your mouth. <laughs> then you went to the... Uh, uh, the uh, food chute, 
uh, it's food that they, it was garbage actually, uh, that they had kept in a nice warm place for uh, a few weeks. And then uh, they put that in, it was a little covered type deal. It, the covering was probably 12 inches, 18 inches high, and you had to crawl through that. And uh, if, <laughs> if somebody lost their cookies, you know, right in front of you, you had to crawl through theirs too. I mean, it was just terrible. At the end of that, uh, you just took your clothes off and threw them overboard because there was n no saving them. I mean, the, cr the clothes were just totally ruined. And they had a sh shower faci uh, facility up there. Right. So you could take a shower and rinse off. Even two weeks before, they would start to save up some of the old food, uh, celery and lettuce and whatever else. And uh, We did find a couple of the containers and we threw that overboard, so we got in a little trouble for that with the, <laughs> the guys who were already the, the uh, shellbacks, but uh, they had plenty to go around. Uh, you'd get up at old dock 30 in the morning and they had pieces of fire hose that were paddles and you'd get paddled and you'd get run through a line of, of sewage and, you know, food sewage and uh, then you'd have to kiss the baby. And, but the week before I was all, all planning and, and my division had named me as one of the people to uh, uh, be their female mascot. And uh, I wasn't picked out of the out of the four people. So my charge was that I tried to get out of the initiation by entering the beauty contest. That was my charge. <laughs> they shave your head off. Then they turn around. They line the sides on each side of the hanger that there. And then you had these guys with the the belly thing there, and as you went by, they, they just were rocking you. They were really, uh, yeah. It wasn't, uh, I could say, it wasn't uh, a nice thing. September 15th, I remember the date well because uh, shortly after that, we crossed the international date line where you lived the same day twice. and. Uh, and we had quite a, a ceremony on the, uh, uh, on the equator, which the Navy kind of slows down on that. That was rough. I mean, we <laughs> beat with hose and, and they had to drink mustard sauce and have our hair shaved and go through the garbage tunnel. But it was an experience that, that I remember always. So you are a shellman. I am a trusty shellback, and I belong to the ancient order of, of the deep. Well, the polywog, if you hold your breath a long time, you're a good sailor. I mean, we had officers enlisted, getting sick to their stomach, turning green, because they, they would, the shellbacks would make a tunnel you have to go through, almost like a bunch of broad banks all together to make a long tunnel. And they filled it full of all the garbage you could think of from the mist eggs. Even when somebody got sick in the mist eggs, they saved it and put it in that tube where you had to crawl through. We went across the equator, then they formed lines. You had to bite off on something in there, you didn't know what it was, and it spit it out because it choked you half to death. We were going from a polywild, which is, to them was a low life. And they went to show back at me. You were King Neptune's sidekick on on that part of it because you were more important than in the fort. Mm -hmm. He was just a number on a card. The specific traditions of crossing the line uh, have changed over time, uh, especially when there are broad societal changes within the country and within the navy. Uh, so, for example, uh, the traditions change when women are assigned to ships. The traditions change as regulations against hazing become more set in stone throughout the, the broader military in the country. So, uh, what you heard about in this series of videos is what it was like on this ship. Let us know in the comment section down below what are some other traditions associated with crossing the line that uh, you have been a part of or maybe you've heard of.
I'm interested to see what else is out there. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. In particular, your support has allowed us to continue making videos, and there's a link in the description below for ways you can donate to continue to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, subscribing so more people find out about our channel and the museum. Thanks for watching. We really didn't make uh, too big a deal out of it. Uh, I think all of us were new to it, so we didn't have uh, uh, the people to haze us. And, and that day we, we went across the equator about eight times, so it became rather commonplace to us.